is in the books, a story of survival and broken dreams. My name is Frodan, and I'm here to see more people play card games, and I'm really excited because I'm also joined by Raven and Savit. Savit, you did a great job last week, and now you're back. Uh, you feeling all right? Is, is, is it a lot of action to take in all at once? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited about this. This is the European one. Yeah, I'm from Europe, so I got a little bit more... Uh, oh, like I couldn't tell. Your accent's really, yeah. really clean. Yep, it <laughs> sure is. But uh, for me, this, especially like this one, is, uh, is even more important. It's just to see Europeans, see different players from different countries compete, because it's always like kind of that rivalry between the countries, not just the players. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, Savitsi has been doing such a great job casting all throughout the weekend, but we also have Raven, who's uh, been doing such a good job in the prelims. Really glad to have you on board for the EU Championships. I know you want to represent your region as well. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, I just echo what Savit said. It's uh, great for me to see the uh, EU players, and we've got a, like, really strong selection of players, actually, and they're all very different personalities as well, which I'm really looking forward to seeing come out over the weekend. Definitely. Now we have a second match. It's Nyman versus Nick Slay. Uh, we'll introduce him in just a sec, but we want to remind you guys also to hashtag HC and just get out there on social media and vote for who you guys will maybe you're cheering for maybe you don't think you'll predict that they'll win or maybe you're just kind of voting for both of them and you just want to see both of them succeed you'll get to know their story a little bit more but for now let's go ahead and meet our players let's meet our first player it is Nick Slay Yes, so uh, Nick Slay is from Germany, and he's actually one of, out of all the players, one of the most laid back. He's just like, yeah, if I do well this event, I'll actually, uh, you know, play more, maybe stream more if that's what the people want, um, and then just, you know, progress from there. But if I don't do well, then I'll just probably just keep playing, quite relaxed about it. And uh, so, yeah, I think maybe lack of nerves might benefit him. Yeah, uh, he has a very laid back attitude, which we'll talk about more, and that'll probably help him against a player who has a lot riding on this. It's Nyman. Yeah, Nyman last year uh, got banned from uh, competitive play, and for for that year he's back. His uh, his uh, penalty has been lifted, and he's looking for redemption. Absolutely, he's a story of like you said, redemption, Savis. That is the big word that comes to mind. Nyman has had his ups and downs, but the big thing on his mind is proving that he's the best. He wants to show the rest of the world that you know when he hits number one with Hunter, that it's not a fluke. And he's still bringing Hunter to this day. That's right. Nyman is a loyalist. We talk about Rogue. We talk about Priest. We talk about even Shaman being these classes where people have to be dedicated. But this guy, he loves Hunter. He loves Rexar. And he loves greeting people, especially travelers. Yeah, Hunter was in the spotlight for a long time as one of the top decks that everybody kept bringing to, to, to tournaments. But recently, we haven't seen so much of it. We did see a Hunter in the previous match, but in the, in the North American Championships, for example, I don't think there was a single Hunter. Yeah, I think what's interesting about the Hunter pick, actually, is that because no one expects it, they're not really building the lines up, their lineups to deal with Hunter at all. So there's definitely, I think, space for it to just sneak through there and grab a few wins. It's, it's certainly an underrepresented, underrated class, uh, as we saw that it was very good against Druid, which is a very popular class to bring into this top eight. Take a look at the poll results. It seems pretty even right now. Uh, you know, Nine Man versus Nick Slay. I think people are still a little bit uh, uh, unfamiliar with them. And like we said, we, we have some really interesting stories to talk about. Uh, specifically with Nine Man, he also comes from a region that is uh, in, in it's like technically Central Asia, but it's also a part of Europe. It's from Kazakhstan, which is a country that I don't think people immediately think, wow, the best players in the world in Hearthstone, they come from Kazakhstan. <laughs> I don't think that immediately jumps out to them. I, I think that's really fascinating to see a player come all the way here, probably the longest distance to Hollywood. Yeah, I don't know any other Kazakhstani players, and uh, Naiman is definitely a strong one. He's, uh, he's one of my favorites to potentially even uh, win this uh, whole event. I think so. I think so. Take a look at the, the bands here. We have Warrior Band on both sides, and we have Hunter, Mage, and the Paladin up against the Druid Paladin and Warlock. What are your first thoughts, Raven? Yeah, the band's really interesting. It's something I actually discussed with a lot of the players beforehand. A, a, a player like Nyman, super known for his Hunter and his skill with that class. Do you want to ban out that just because he's so comfortable with it? Or do you go for the more like analytical approach and just go for the lineups? And Nick Slay was like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go with the lineups. And this was in front of Nyman. And he was like, yeah, sure, let me play Hunter. That's fine. That's okay by me. There's so many mind games just yeah. being tossed out <laughs> by these players. You saw last week Nostam was pretending up until the very last second that he was a Zoo Warlock. Game number one is already underway. Paladin versus the Hunter. Nyman is iconic with Hunter. 
Uh, and he's just one of the few players oh who my. ends up doing it. Nyman looking to be playing a little bit more aggressive Hunter this time. He's known for playing the mid-range style with freezing traps. And I actually talked with Nixley earlier today, and Nixley was predicting Nyman to be playing a double freezing trap Hunter. So there's a potential that uh, some mistakes might be made if he makes the wrong guess. Yeah, and there are already some key cards. In this matchup overall, I think Face Hunter does pretty well versus Secret Paladin. And normally the damage is just too much as Secret Paladin doesn't really run too much healing whatsoever other than maybe a True Silver. And cards like Explosive Trap, Unleash, especially if it can be combined on turn five with a Knife Juggler, can do so much damage to Paladin, it's insane. And I wonder if uh, Nyman's gonna be feeling good at all because as a, an aggressive hunter, you wanna be able to play something on turn one, start being really aggressive from the get-go, but it looks like the Paladin's gonna be the one taking the initiative. Yeah, that's not a good hunter hand at all. Usually you wanna play that one drop, he only had an abusive search on, oh no, sorry, he didn't have anything for turn one at all. And uh, from a Nixley's point of view, this still looks like a mid-range hunter. Yeah, I think Nyman's really going to be hoping he can draw into a knife juggler before turn five, because look at Nixley's hand as well as the board. It's really going to flood the board quickly, and that turn five play from the Hunter is something that can actually just win you the game. If you make the board just empty for turn six when Mysterious Challenge is expected to come down, you normally in a quite strong position as the Hunter player. Yeah, Nyman does have a lot of uh, key cards for his max matchup. For example, that Unleash the Hounds is one of the best cards to go against the, when you're going against a paladin because of the synergy it kind of has in uh, countering the master for battle that does summon multiple minions yeah now we're actually going to see whether nick slay is going to make the play as if it's freezing trap or actually you know test it otherwise i think there's almost no reason to try and attack face actually with the, your first minion right because uh, mm. you can actually test a lot of traps by trading with a minion and you know it's still not bad if it is something like bear trap or explosive trap because you get to trade right yeah. so um it, sh it should be okay and i imagine we will see a trade into a minion but it's, it's what he chooses to do with the rest of the turn based on the knowledge he's got about what trap it could be. Yeah, going into the game, Nick Slave was probably... Oh, he, oh now he's like... <laughs> yeah, that, sitting the, back, he was like, lean back like... Oh, <laughs> not the freezing, because he was... He, yeah, yeah, he thought oh, there would be a freezing. Well, the thing as well we've seen recently from a lot of variations from Hunter is so many different traps. There are even face hunters that play three one-offs uh, in terms of the traps like Bear Trap, Explosive and Snake, something like that. We saw Snake's last game from Dot Tippy. So there's so many different things you have to play around because they're all sort of used at the moment. Right. And uh, the ABC Surgeon does signal a little bit uh, about that base hunter, but it's still, it, you can't say for sure just based on that one card. Yeah, because even in Face Hunter, you can use freezing traps, right? Or even, you know, bear traps yeah. as well to make the trades awkward and give you potentially three more power on the board that sort of gives the bear charge if they proc it the turn and can't deal with it. Right. I'm going for the unleash here. I wouldn't expect him to be making any trades at all yeah. because the Secret Paladins do tend to cut the Consecration, so there's no real punish possible right now. I think as well, even with Consecrate, if you look at the health totals now, like, that damage is really strong for Nyman. He's just put on, uh, what, five damage on the board? Um, and then the, his, his hero powers are going to start stacking up. He has also Animal Companion Kill Command, so he knows he's got the burn, and he just needs to push that Paladin that little bit more, whereas even though the Paladin's got the board, Nyman's on 28 life. He's got all the time in the world at the moment. That's right. For Nyman right now, Sludge Belcher from Nixley's side would be a huge issue because the Owl was already played, but uh, Nixley doesn't quite have it yet. And uh, here Nyman has five mana. Evaluating his options. The scientist is something that he probably wants to get out as fast as he can. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's a really important note that Nyman feels like he can just use his hero power and leverage the damage from this point on. And Nick Slay picking up Choose Over Champion might even be relevant. That a little bit of heal is, can be huge to give you the extra turns to win the game. Absolutely a great card. Four mana, eight damage, heal for four. When you're racing, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, I think Nyman's in a really strong position though, because with these two minions, the Lepanome's so good, because you drop it down, it's two damage, right? Like, let your opponent trade into it, it's fine. Um, and then with the Scientist, he just saw an explosive. And if he trades into the Scientist, well, this juggler's gonna die if he attacks face then. So he's just losing more power. And don't forget, Explosive Trap does do two damage to the hero as well. So it's just yet more, just squeezing in those hero powers and really pushing to finish the game. I think it's gonna be an uphill climb for Nick Slay now. Yeah, it's a difficult situation for him, because he can't quite know what the, what the other traps Nyman does have in his deck. For, for example, if he goes for the scientist here, is it going to be another explosives? Is it going to be a maybe a snake trap? Yeah. There's no way to really tell. I mean, we don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, put put that onto the fact that it could be anything. Oh, and it is snakes. It is snakes. Yeah. So as he draws juggler as well. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow, but uh, we're probably still leaning towards the animal companion. Not sure, that might be a little bit more mana efficient. That juggler hero power just seems so weak. Yeah, I think the only problem with Animal Companion and that maybe favors the Juggler Hero Power is if the Juggler's left alone, well, you're going to get Juggler's next turn, which right. always good, right? If it's traded into Snake Trap. And then the issue with the Animal Companion is if it's Huffer and that secret is get down, then you're in some trouble, right? Because you're not going to not attack with the Huffer that turn. Right. He does go for the Juggler. He knows that one Unleash was already played, so he only probably has one remaining in his deck or maybe none. So there's no combo potential for later on. It also, he does have that snake trap that was mentioned, uh, so the snakes with that juggler works quite well. Yep. He's so afraid of the second explosive trap, <laughs> but this attack is 100% yeah, correct. Is yeah, well done. Done. Okay. It's kind kind of interesting, actually, that he chose to attack with the minibot and not the juggler there, because if it's explosive, then the minibot survives, still trades into the juggler, which is fine. Um, if, and if he, he's still expecting maybe a freezing trap, then yeah, you know, Minibot would probably be better because you want the Juggler, but Minibot still has Divine Shield and then can still trade effectively against the, the Juggler itself on the other side of the board. Okay, I stand correct. I, I meant in the sense that he guessed correctly on the yeah, trap. Yeah, yeah, of course, but, uh, yeah, yeah. In this case, it's it pays off a lot, and that True Server Champion's a ton of pressure. How does Nightman respond? Does he get the Unleash the Hounds? He has to get it. I believe that the, the Noble Sacrifice locks Nyman out of this game because the, yeah. the Noble Sac will stop either a Juggler or the potential Huffer. Because if Nyman manages to roll a Huffer with the Kill Command, I believe that would do it if it wasn't for that yeah, Noble Sac. Yeah, it's exactly lethal without the Noble Sacrifice, yeah. That's crazy how quickly that game's flipped. And actually, because it was Snake Trap and not a second explosive, it actually just changed the whole game. Right. Or even the the, con the 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 inverse, right? If Snake Trap came out first and Explosive came out second, yeah, the dynamic would have shifted. Oh, he got, a lot. oh, that must feel <laughs> terrible. <laughs> he got the Huffer. He even got that. the Juggle. Oh so if he if he had uh, let's say one more mana, he could he could squeeze in the Kill Command and the Hero Power with the Huffer attack. Yeah. So that would do it. But as it is, it's not <laughs> not quite gonna be enough. So <laughs> close yet so far. I think it's worse that he rolled Huffer. If he rolled like Mishi, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you know what, Leok? Yeah, fine. But like, because he rolled the, the damage he needed to actually win the game without that get down, like, oh, that was so, so rough. Certainly. Shredder time. <laughs> this is Shredder. only chance to get a Doomsayer from oh, here. Oh, okay. That is not a Doomsayer. And <laughs> Slay gonna take game one. Well, at least uh, he got the good Shredder roll out of the way, right? So it's like, okay, well, Next you got time. the Totem Golem. <laughs> You're not going to get a Totem Golem again. Yeah, it's got to be Millhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Suck you, Vist. <laughs> we'll see. Game one's in the books. Nick Slay starting it off with a very powerful win. Getting the Secret Paladin over the Face Hunter, which I believe that Face Hunter is like designed to kill with decks like Secret Paladin. Absolutely. The Face Hunter is very good against that deck because the, the, the Secret Paladin does not have any, any effects to heal. And the traps explode. Explosive Trap, Snake Trap, they're so, so efficient against the, against the type of gameplay that the Pal Secret Paladin uh, wants to play. Uh, really rough one for Naiman to, to drop game one there. Yeah, I'm trying to analyze the rest of the lineups. There is that opening where Hunter is still good against most Warlock decks. You don't know exactly what type of Warlock Nick Slay has, uh, although there's a couple theories. I think Nimsh was even saying, like, oh, I can predict everything that Nick Slay is probably going to bring based off his lineup setup. It's, it's a very traditional one. Druid, Paladin, Warlock, Warrior seems to be yeah. the go-to core four, like we could call it, in, in current Conquest format. Yeah, and especially with the, the ban from Nyman of Nick Slay's Warrior, you would imagine the Mage is going to be Freeze Mage, uh, just because like, it just doesn't match up very well. But it's going to be interesting whether Nyman actually chooses the route of locking in his Hunter again, because there is an idea that because you have to win with every class anyway, and you, maybe he wants to guard some information from his other decks. If he wins with the Hunter, yep. um, great, you know, he's won, but if he, um, you know, maybe like loses 3-0, for example, he can at least guard some information about his Paladin and Mage. But in this situation, it's not di necessarily the best move, because if Nixley was to predict that Nixley would be able to pick the deck that he thinks is the better one against Nyman's Hunter, which would most likely be the Druid, I think, or depending on what kind of Warlock he's running. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to guess on Zoo, but we'll find out. And I guess in the meantime, while we're on that topic, let's find out a little bit more about Nick Slay, who's looking to upside <coughs> Nyman excuse me, as uh, one of the mysterious players of this tournament. My first match will be against Nayman. He's probably the most famous player in this tournament. He got disqualified in 2015, but he's back to win it now, and... I'm probably seen as the underdog going into it, but I'll hope to prove them wrong. For me, it's important to win this tournament because I really like to be perfect in whatever I do. And this is the reason I want to win and to prove to myself that 
I can do that. I really put my efforts in order to come here. And hopefully my efforts are gonna help me to win the tournament. Most people are training for Neyman. He's more kind of the old school player. He was famous years ago for his hunter play. The hunter is the most, uh, probably the most aggressive deck. I feel really comfortable being defensive while being aggressive. I think he might be nervous because everyone's cheering for him, everyone wants him to perform well and everyone kind of needs him to perform well. All the pros in Europe that didn't make it are cheering for him because he's, yeah, their favorite. The only one that yeah, played with them years ago. Uh, my goal in Carson is to become the world champion and to be the best one in the game. I'm confident in my lineup. I played all the decks, a lot of games, hundreds of games, and I've had success with it, and I hope I'll have success here. Success is not guaranteed, but it is certainly very rewarding once you're able to get it. Nick Slay up 1-0 right now over Nyman, who is down uh, a game, but I still feel pretty confident that he can bring it back depending on how things go. And Nixley also brought up a really interesting point. I'm going to go ahead and toss it to Sveets right after this question. Uh, a lot of the established European players who, I, I, I completely agree with the notion that Europe is right now the strongest region in Hearthstone overall. Uh, yeah, know, of, of course. Present company not influencing my discussion <laughs> at all. Uh, but w w what happened, do you think, that really brought players like Nixley to be able to upset some of the establishment? I think that um, there are, might be a more... Um, highly motivated players in in Europe uh, than, than maybe in the no in the Americas. It's just my theory. There's a lot of great players from ma okay. many different countries and like we know I have to I have to just throw it out there. A lot, <laughs> okay, of, the, okay, a lot of the pro European players do play on the North American ladder to try to get the points e more easily. Easier, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's so. the easy theory. ladder, right? I mean you can't really say which one is like the hardest but but some some players do consider that the North American region <laughs> the North American rank okay. play is a little bit easier. It's true, you know, world champion Oskaka actually said those things word for word. And <laughs> a part of me died that day, because I knew it was true. It was really interesting seeing the video as well, uh, how uh, how different these two players are. Nyman's like, I'm going to win, I am going to be the best, and that's just it. Whereas Nick Slay's just like, yeah, you know, I'm confident with my decks, I think, I'm, I, think I can take him, Nyman's a very good player, but sure, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I really like Nick Slay's chances here, even though Nyman has to be the winner, uh, the, like the, the favorite going into this, but Nick Slay's a relaxed attitude. We saw him get a little bit surprised by the fact that the trap was not a freezing trap, but he adjusted his gameplay perfectly. He played around the, the explosive trap, uh, uh, taking minimal damage from it. He played around the snake trap, just like... I think Nixley played game one perfectly, and if he keeps doing that, he, he has a very good chance to and, take Nyman down. And the thing is as well, that surprise fact is now gone. He has to play the Hunter again, and he knows, okay, there's at least one Explosive and there's one Snake. So he can judge the risks on what his board looks like onto how he decides to work out what trap that is, which is very, very important. But Nyman's opening hand looks a little bit better than it did last time. Yeah, he's sure on the does. coin, he has early drops, and you know, if he can get aggressive against a Warlock deck, which doesn't have a turn one play, that's gonna be really dicey. Although again, Nick Slade just hasn't revealed exactly what type of warlock he is tonight. But it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that starting hand from Nyman is just incredible. What more can you hope for? The snake trap might be a tiny bit off because usually you want to get it from a scientist instead. But against the zoo, you don't even mind having it in your hand because it's such a powerful card. And sure. also, the, the way you sort of combat Zoo is to trade the board, right? You want them to have an empty board all the time, whereas the Hunter doesn't really rely on that. They normally play the minion. If it dies next turn, sure, I don't care, you know? Whereas Zoo's so uh, focused on building that board up, then he's probably going to trade with minions to keep the Hunter down, and that's going to prop snakes, which then helps them throughout so much more. Right, with those traps, it's quite often the, the Hunter player who is the one able to go for phase and, uh, and the Warlock player being the one who has to trade. Defender of Argus might slightly like twist things up at some point, because with those taunts, obviously, you, you can afford to go phase instead, but uh, definitely favors Hunter. And look at this Hunter, I'm just like, I'm liking the, the choice of bringing it into this tournament. Yeah, it's something that uh, maybe people expect it of Nyman, but again, you can't build your lineup against one person in this kind of tournament. It's just not going to work, right? So uh, you can't really, you know, play around dealing with a lot of Hunter when you're only really expecting one player to bring it. Um, but this seems to be uh, going pretty well so far for Nyman, especially because Zoo isn't known for its AOE board clear, right? And it's <laughs> already Nyman's building up a board, which Hunter normally doesn't get the chance to do a lot of the time. 
Uh, it's very rare to see any board clear at all from the zoo. I've occasionally seen somebody take in like one shadow plane, but that's you almost never see it. Yeah. Especially as the list become more refined, it is just about I I will win the board and my AOE is my better creatures, so right? That are just gonna get so much trade up value. Yeah, but Nick missing that one drop early on is causing him to take a little bit more damage than he wants to. He did pick up that Mortal Coil, which is a really powerful card, but he also uses his Void Caller uh, as a way to guarantee that these two ones have to at least trade into it. Oh, Ooh, Huffer. That's a really good trade, so he doesn't have to use any of these one drops uh, to the Void Caller instead. It definitely helps. Going for a little bit of trading there. Hmm. It doesn't want to see that... Um, that minion get any buffs on turn four. Yeah, also does, he wants to keep his Huffer alive. And, and the Huffer, yeah, 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 also protecting the Huffer, but bad news for, for Nyman. There is that Mortal Coil that was picked up from their Dark Battle. The only positive thing there is, like, on turn four, like, you are making them spend one mana, right? So that's the sort of thing you have to think about about sure. removal. On certain turns, if they're spending, like, one to two mana, then their turn, yes, you've lost a minion, but as Face Hunter, you're normally not too fast, because uh, it's normally done its job on the turn it's played. And then, well, they only have two mana to combat your board the next turn when you've got full mana. So it's uh, not too bad about the Coil, not fantastic, of course, but Nightman has, I think, a pretty okay follow-up here. Yep, uh, Nine Man has the opportunity to pave the way for a pretty big board to expand with a lot of small tokens. Uh, Haunted Creeper preceding the Knife Juggler is usually a great way to try to control the state of the board and also make sure that you get some damage in. Uh, th the question is, like, do you want to develop Snake Trap behind it? Or, you know, is, what's the timing for that in your opinion, Savits? I think you've got to go for the Juggler Snake Trap right here because. Uh, it just seems like a, such a powerful play, because uh, how does Nixley counter? Like, even if Nixley had the perfect cards from the Zoo, zoo deck to, to, to uh, counter this, what would it even be? I can't think of a... Probably Implosion would be the best I Implosion answer. would be like, be like fairly decent, but even then there would still be that 2-1, and Naiman is winning the race. I think he can assume that it's not Implosion, though, because he saw that his opponent had an opportunity to Implosion last turn with, against the... Huffer. Instead, he had to use a Mortal Coil that he got off Peddler, which is a little bit of a desperate move. So I think that's a pretty good read from Nightman. Yeah, do you think we're actually... I mean, no, this turn just feels really wonky, because, yeah, Lothab turn 5 is pr pretty okay, but because the trap's down and the juggler's down, th there's a thought of just dropping the egg there, and it's like, do the, the, if these juggles hit the egg, suddenly I've got 4-4, um, and then can do some more work with that the following turn. But it's definitely rough, but I do agree with the juggler and uh, Snake. Snake Trap play the previous turn for yeah. Nyman because you have to deal with the juggler, right? Ooh. Oh. It's ambitious. I mean, Nick, look at Lixley's face, man. He <laughs> he knows. This place stinks. Oh, no. Oh, oh there's the response. Do, do the juggles hit that abusive? If the abusive dies to juggles, oh. then... No. no! He's not the one. Does, does he, like, have to power overwhelm him now? Oh, unless the second juggle hits the creeper as well. That would be The third nasty. juggle, sorry. Oh, okay. Do you think he already... Oh, no, he didn't already queue up because that's a spawn. Okay, I wondered if he already queued up the Creeper to attack something and was like, oh. Uh, Nick Slay's face says it all. He was just he was hoping that trap would have been explosive instead, but that was, unfortunately for him, not the case, and he's going to be taking a lot of damage this time. Yeah, I love the choice to just be really aggressive here. Hunter is just going to be able to utilize its hero power really well. Nick Slay is just in a tough position. That is one of the better cards you could have drawn, though. But, uh, do, but Nyman has the owl ready, which is key. At oh, this point, right. at this point in the hunter match, if you're the hunter, you definitely want an owl ready and waiting just in case a taunt comes down. Yeah, quite possibly the best draw he could have hoped for, but it's still he's so far behind on, on the life totals. Nyman still at full HP. Well, not anymore, but he was. And uh, Nick's laid down to eight, something like a kill commander. Yeah, a juggle to the face it, might also be lethal right here. Yep. I really like the play from Nick's Slay as well to just go face. Normally, like, oh, I should kill the juggler, but he's never going to win if he keeps trading with the hunter board because of the hunter's hero power. So he's got a power of warming in hand. He has a Gormok, so he's got some burst to a certain extent. So he's just gone for the face and be like, this is how I'm going to close this game out if yeah. there's any way at all. I believe Silence of the Lord might be the way. With, with that play, if he hits one of the juggles, either on the egg or on the face, the hero power yep. would do it. Because in case that the egg gets hit, he, he could uh, choose to trade the work and infiltrator and then go for a for face with the. Uh, Juggler and the Wolf Rider, and in addition to the Hero Party, would yeah. exactly do it. So there's a... Well, he has two chances with the Juggler. Two chances, yeah, so two that's, targets, so... I was thinking 50%, but it's actually more than that. Chooses to Owl the okay. Lothab afterwards. Okay, well... 
Not, I mean, that it, not that it really matters. Yeah, though, I mean, but... the, he's still putting himself in a situation where the Warlock cannot win. I believe it might have been just a tiny bit stronger the other way around, but it's not gonna matter. Like, no way out from, from this one for Nixley. Yeah, not even three cards that can generate the most damage would have saved him there. So Nixley is going to drop a game, and Nine Man gets a win with the Hunter, a much needed victory, as if he was down 0 2, it would have been really tough to climb back against Druid three times in a row. Yeah, we really saw the impact of the Zulot not drawing that Void Walker for turn one. It was just a little bit too late and didn't quite get the value when that offer came out. Definitely. Yeah. About that game, I think the biggest thing was that if Nyman was to drop that and uh, he's playing a freeze match, he would be in a lot of trouble against that Druid from Nyx Because now there is a chance that the, if it's a freeze match from Nyman, that he gets to match it up against the, the Warlock from uh, from Nixley, which improves his uh, chances drastically. Yeah, it's a really good observation as well. Very smart. Um, so, yeah, that's going to wrap up game number two. Now, before we go into game number three, let's get to have an opportunity to know a little bit more about Nick Slay as a player from Germany. We just know that he cares uh, just about having fun more than anything else, but there's more to him. Here's what they said. I think I'm more invested in the games I play than the other people here. I think it's, yeah, I show more emotions and I don't know. Maybe I'm more of a role player than the other ones. When my hero takes damage, I also take damage in real life. <laughs> this guy, why would you say these things? I am so sorry, Nick Slay. I am so oh, sorry. Nick Slay. I am cursive to the fates. He's going to be so upset with you if he watches the bots, right? He's going to be very upset with you. I'm Nick Slay. My real name is Philip Hain, and I'm from Germany. I don't really feel pressured. I think I'm going into this as an underdog. Uh, something that could get punished. Going to be so much damage. Nick Slay sitting there. He sees it. He's almost there. He's almost to the round of eight, almost to the Europe Championships. He can feel it. And oh, there's the concede. Wow. Nick Slay is moving on. The best part about the event is playing the game. You get an hour in a best of five to perform as well as you can and you try to deliver and win the series. Of course, it feels better if you win. I don't really have a lot of practice partners. I don't have people I talk to very regularly, so I, I don't have that kind of team or something or Skype group that I'm in. I might be at a disadvantage, but if I win my series, it's fine, right? I don't know if I'll go full time, but I'll invest a lot of time into it. I'll stream if people want to stream. Winning at BlizzCon would mean a lot to me. It kind of shows that you're the best player in the world and you made it. You beat everyone else. Everyone tried to be there and you're the one who made it. If I win BlizzCon, I'll probably set my account to busy permanently so that I don't have to answer all the messages they sent to me. <laughs> If people want to see more of me, they will get more of me. Oh, Nick. That was the first time I watched that interview, and now I see what you guys were laughing about. They were roaring this morning watching some of the media pieces. Uh, I was getting my makeup done, so I can see why, man. What a character. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, like, right near the start of the video, uh, like, is he doing some sort of mind games? Like, yeah, right, if right. my hero takes damage, I take damage, so don't hit it. You know, you don't want to actually <laughs> hurt me. Is that like, you know, trying to off-put his opponents, like, make them feel <laughs> bad, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the strategy. For sure. <laughs> it looks like you guys are starting to at least vote a little bit more towards Nick Slay. He's got a pretty laid-back, carefree attitude. Of course, uh, it's all fun in games. Uh, until you're playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is what's on the line here. Keep in mind, the winner of this tournament goes straight to the Hearthstone World Championship happening at BlizzCon later this year. So the, the Europe Winter Champion, who is it going to be? We could be looking at one of these two guys. A lot of people peg Nine Man as one of the players to go all the way because he's the most known, but that's not guaranteed. Not guaranteed at all. It's going to be a close matchup here, and Nixley might be with a might have a tiny advantage, but it's going to be a huge deal how their decks get lined up for the next game. That's right. Because it's sort of a rock paper scissors situation right now with with the with the lineups potentially. So a lot of mind games. Maybe they're predicting what the other person would uh, would choose here, and whoever gets the gets it correctly is going to have the upper hand. Yeah, and this can get a little bit crazy. Um, based on it, and because you can go too many layers of mind games, like it can go too fast, then you end up resetting yourself all the way to the beginning of what you wanted to play. Right. So it looks like, uh, considering the Nyman's uh, 
Neumann's mage is probably Freeze mage, that Nixley is the one who got the upper hand here. Because even though the, the, the Secret Paladin is not bad at all against the Zoo, uh, it's, a, it's the better matchup for, than, than the Freeze mage would be. Yep. I definitely think Nyman really needs to win this game because then he, he just automatically has his freeze mage versus Zoo at some point. So so the win is going to be really important for Nyman here. Yeah. Nyman has a big game hunter in his paladin deck. Yeah, that's that a, is interesting. That's very interesting. Could it be maybe it's not secrets or, or did we see secrets in the Malik and I kind of missed that? Well, I don't believe. I think we came straight. Uh, after they made their mulligan decisions already. I don't think he kept the big game hunter in his opening hand. Oh, that's, it's very interesting. Iron Peak Owl is also something that we don't always see in a Paladin. It's uh, fairly rare, so we might be looking at something uh, a little bit different from Nyman than we, what we used to from uh, some other Dr. players. Dr. Boom's not going to help us try and work out what it is. That seems a fairly <laughs> standard pick in every single deck. Yeah, a lot of uh, players <laughs> do consider that card to be quite powerful. Okay, well, Nick Slay, he's, again, been intently staring at Nyman to see his reactions when he play. I like that element of being able to gather information. <laughs> at this point, Nick Slay, though, not really sure if he should just go for this nice juggle 50-50. Oh, man. It's not going to be 50-50. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry assuming, assuming, assuming it happens or doesn't yeah. happen, please. <laughs> Three out of it either <laughs> kills it or it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> Look, I just finished casting with Kibler. He uses me like, three times. He so, got the juggles yeah. uh, as, uh, as expected. And um, uh, another interesting game thing, by the way, that, uh, that I remember Nick Slay say this morning was that uh, he wasn't sure if Nyman would play even a, like a face paladin type of strategy or like an aggressive paladin. Yeah, uh, that is a possibility. But I don't think that is the case here playing Dr. Boom and BGH. Nick Slay picks up Argent Squire, an interesting choice to include into the zoo deck. What are you trying to accomplish when you play a, a card like Argent Squire? Ah, uh, it's a it's a tough, <laughs> tough call. I think that for the early trading, it's quite powerful, and it is a sticky minion. So uh, so having having it available for a future turn buffs is uh, is very likely. It's uh, it's more stickier than uh, than some of the other one drops. It also trades very well against the face decks, for example, the leper gnomes. It, it can kill a leper gnome and still survive there for the future. What do you yeah, think, Raymond? Exactly. Yeah, and I think in a, in a kind of weird mm. way, it's like just more aggressive, right? Because it's a turn one. Uh, drop that doesn't just die to one attack, right? It, so it's, you know, the odds on it dealing more damage over turns are pretty high. And as you said, the amount of like trade up buffs that the zoo player can uh, can give the minions, when you add Divine Shield onto that, you can suddenly just remove the minions very easily. So especially in the, the mirrors where you fighting for that board control, the squires are really powerful. Yeah, squire also goes well in Hobgoblin decks, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's not what Nick Slay is playing. <laughs> Unfortunately not. I think we'd all like to see a Hobgoblin deck come out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. Ooh. Equality. So okay. I think with that draw, we can kind of rule out the possibility of Secret Paladin. It's going to be something a little bit different, maybe even mid-range here. Yeah, mid-range Paladin is a deck that I know a lot of Chinese players actually really like. Um, and, and we don't, haven't seen mm. mid-range Paladin for a long time just because it felt like Secret Paladin was actually like a better mid-range Paladin in a lot of ways. It builds the board faster, it ends the game quicker, it has more range. And also as well with Murloc Paladin, it, uh, Murloc Paladin's matchups are actually do do a lot of good matchups that mid-range Paladin used to do, but a lot of people just feel it's better, like say against Control Warrior, for example, oh. like the Murloc Paladin's pretty decent sure. versus that, so Priest. people have just been taking that as well, yeah. I'm very intrigued by uh, Nyman's uh, like deck choices here, going for that face hunter, going for mid-range to Paladin. He, Nyman takes the game very seriously, and uh, these are the decks that he thinks give him the best chances to win the tournament, and uh, well, it's going to yeah. be really cool to see how it plays out. Is there a possibility that Nyman also has played a Reno Paladin? We have only seen one wow. copy of each That's card true. So oh, it'll be so cool. And now because Reno glows, it's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah we'll know. Well, I mean, once we see the Reno Jackson, we'll know yeah, for yeah. sure. But I, I'm just throwing out the possibility. I'm, I'm pretty convinced it might be the mid-range Paladin because it feels like that's more consistent. But it would be cool. He wouldn't be the first person, though. We've seen Life Coach actually experiment with that uh, archetype as well. Yeah, I've also exper experimented a li little bit with it, but uh, I could not quite nail it down. I could not find a like competitive version of it that I would bring to tournaments necessarily. I mean, I think in like December or something, Crane was actually holding one of the top spots on Legend Ladder with Reno Paladin as well. So it's definitely a deck that can do some work. Yeah.
Let's, uh, <laughs> let's hope so. that he's playing. I'm yeah. kind of hoping for it. Uh, I love the nervous chuckle from the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Could be good. It also could hor horribly fail if it doesn't uh, work out. That might nine. be kind of bad if you don't draw it. Because <laughs> the Reno decks do, uh, do have that issue that sometimes you just or they don't draw the Reno Jackson and Paladin card draw is not quite on the same level as yep. the Warlock is uh, that we more commonly see. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Zombie Chow just again shows its more <laughs> defensive approach, but this True Sword Champion has been completely stalled by this Argent Squire. I guess the the let me. Uh, I just like the expressions of Nick's face. He's like talking to himself. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So just having a conversation with himself. Sorry. It, it feels like Nick Slay actually has an angel and a devil on both sides <laughs> of his shoulders. Maybe even two pairs. Just because there's, a, it it's, seems like he has a lot of conversation. It's snake going. trap. No, it's explosive trap. <laughs> it's snake trap. It's like no. <laughs> yeah. In this case, uh, Nyman can't. I don't think he's. It's worth attacking his divine shield. No, it doesn't really accomplish anything. In my opinion, it's better to try to pop the Divine Shield with maybe a 1-1 one, one and then finish off the True Silver. Oh, he's going to go for it. Uh, if he plays a lot of weapons, that does make sense because there's, yeah. there's like a decent chance that uh, he will draw another weapon on the following Whoa. turn. That in that case, it certainly would help. Gormak the Impaler getting value. Yeah, not Pretty bad nice. at all. Yeah, he can actually play everything but Implosion here, and because last turn, um, last turn was, was a Consecrate turn, right? He could have cleared the board with Consecrate and then attack into the 4-4 with the weapon, and he, did, he didn't. So you just know Consecrate is not in hand, so there's no reason to actually not just flood the board with everything you've got and just try and close out the game, because the Paladin's only on 19, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. They go for the life tap though instead of say playing the squire or the abusive to then just push for more damage or get a, a, you know an easier kill on the, the two three. I wouldn't have hated that option either. Uh, how, how badly do you need the card right now? Not sure. Hmm. I think but he's just pacing himself too, realizing that Nine Man's clearly oh. playing a slower deck. <laughs> so with cards like Consecration being a possibility, I think he doesn't want to go too much into it. Oh, a very nice power that, That's lethal, right? Yeah, that's lethal, because uh, 10, 10 power on the board right now. Abusive Surge and Power Overwhelming. Another 6 damage coming from the hands of... Yeah, Nightmare's not even going to yeah, see it. He doesn't want any, any base of this. He gets it. He just <laughs> got completely taken over by it. And not having plays from the mid-game really cost Nightmare, even though he had his most expensive and powerful cards. And Consecrate coming one turn too late. He could have cleared the board if he'd drawn it one turn earlier. He wouldn't have been in that situation, but you know, the zoo did what it does, right? It just builds up the board and overwhelms your opponent. Yeah, that Paladin deck, we can't really charge it based on just one game, but... Uh, in but this, we still in don't really know game, what it is. Yeah, <laughs> but in that one game, it definitely was a clunky throw, and he couldn't like curve out as nicely as he wanted. Didn't get the zombie chow for turn one. Got a little bit later when it didn't help at all. Yeah, so now uh, Nyman has to overcome the Druid. Nick Slay has a pretty good chance of having the Druid hit the fa uh, the Mage, and if it is a Freeze Mage, which we're not sure of, Nyman's going to have a hard time. Uh, while we have an opportunity, let's get to know uh, Nyman a little bit better before we get ready for game number four. I'm Neyman, I'm 28, and I come from Kazakhstan. I was born in Almaty. It's really important for me to re represent uh, the country because there are a lo lot of players in Kazakhstan who are youngsters and they don't really believe that it's possible to get to such events like BlizzCon. In my high school, I was spending a lot of time checking uh, what kind of inventions it's possible to create and stuff. I got into the university in Kazakhstan but then I applied to get the presidential scholarship, which offered me to come to the United States and to study here. My major in Oregon State University was nuclear engineering. And the reason I chose nuclear engineering is because I wanted to return back to Kazakhstan and to develop nuclear engineering over there, because right now, this type of science isn't that much developed. After I finished studying and returning back to Kazakhstan, I realized that there is no future of nu nuclear engineering in my country. In order to live, I have to stick to some other job, and unfortunately, it wasn't nuclear engineering. So I met my fiance during uh, the job in Kazakhstan. I came there, and there was my friend who studied with me in the United States. And he told me that uh, there was a really nice girl, a really cute girl, with whom I must meet. I really thought that it's a really cute and pretty girl, but I didn't feel at the time uh, that I felt in love. 
but after three days I figured out that uh, she, I really like her. So I asked her for a phone number. She was like, oh no, uh, find the telephone number yourself. Uh, so I came up with the idea of uh, bringing the bouquet of flowers and uh, the ticket to the cinema. So I just gave it to her. And uh, on that day, during the movie, she was waiting for me in the cinema. This is how our first date was. And we've been engaged for like half a year. If I win the championship, then I'm definitely gonna spend the whole money on the wedding with my fiance. And it depends on how much, if, if I'm gonna win a lot of money, then it's gonna be a really huge wedding. If not, then it's still gonna be a huge wedding, but hopefully I'm gonna win the tournament. Большое спасибо, что ты в меня верила. Скоро буду в Казахстане. Ну, готовься к свадьбе. Wasn't ready for those feels, man. I got good news for you, Nine Man. No matter what, you do win. You're able to find happiness. Whether it's a big wedding or a small wedding, I think we all can agree. Being good at Hearthstone is really awesome. Yeah, I mean, if you can't not clear engineer, then I guess play Hearthstone. Is so <laughs> you can't good. be that's, a nuclear that's engineer. That's the back of the natural progression. <laughs> and the like back of this thing. Uh, I think right, it's man. I think it's good as well that he because uh, we said as well like Kazakhstan's very underrepresented in Hearthstone. It's kind of good that he's just like I want to show like everyone that plays that he can actually you can make it. There's nothing actually stopping anyone. That's kind of good as well. Yeah, pretty good story right there, man. That, that was really that was really emotional, but now. You know, you gotta you gotta buckle up and saddle all the horse because you gotta go and ride your way to victory. You can't tell a story like that and lose. <laughs> I think, I think How are you going to face your fiance after that, man? Frodan's shedding a tear over here on the I desk. Am. It's like I just I just need a minute. Listen, like. I I'm, I'm a soft American. I'm not the you, you cold-hearted, smooth, Cas Casanova Europeans you guys are. You with your I'm still taking that as a compliment, Frodan. Yeah, you guys look great, man. I look. I look like I cast you five days in a row. Too, <laughs> you look fantastic too. Yeah, Naiman is going to stick uh, with his paladin, hiding that information uh, about the, the remaining deck, and his uh, starting hand is not looking too bad. We still, <laughs> we still doesn't, uh, we still, uh, still quite don't quite know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is not the opening hand you oh, want from Druid. <laughs> yeah, Nick Slay, <laughs> stalling for a little bit, just kind of analyzing what he can do with his hand. You know, there also is merit to. Potentially making your opponent think you have an innervate. That's true. Yeah. I mean, there's no decision obviously here. Right, right. right. Nothing to do. But uh, it, it might be something you want to bluff. Like maybe there's a living root in the hand. I guess you would play it, it though. It feels like you, you would play it. You would play it, yeah. You would play it. I think one of the things as well is that Druid, although this hand is not great in any way, shape, or form, it, it does have the potential. Like if it draws one wild growth or one innovate, suddenly you can get those five drops out very quickly and then start to curve from there. So, you know, it's uh, not the best draw, of course, but definitely not out of it yet. Next lane. Looking at the hero power, that's the only option. The He's just consulting. <laughs> He's just consulting his uh, angel and devil on his yeah. shoulders. It's like, what, what's going on, guys? Where's my where's my wild growth? What's going uh, on? I would probably consider punching the knife juggler here because he doesn't really have a play for turn three. So if he hero powers here and hero powers in turn three, yeah, he takes a bunch of damage, but at least the juggler is going to be dead. I was really wondering how you're going to follow that up because it's like, I'd really consider punching. And I was like, what, Nyman? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can do that, Savit. It's like, you can't just walk over and be like, I win this way. Th that is one way to <laughs> defeat Nyman, but I don't think in the way that you want to. Also, uh, I think you get in trouble with this. Yeah, there might be something in the rules about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you did mean the hero power, of course, Savit. So yeah. it's, uh, we're all about just. Violence first. is not it. the answer. <laughs> yeah. Settle it over card games. Yeah, exactly. I, I like it. it. It takes a bit of courage because the, the, that is an additional six damage. But but I believe that, that six damage would happen anyway. Now if you draw something like a rod, then uh, oh, that, that's okay. You can play that with the hero power here. Yeah. yeah, that gives him some board presence. Although it won't last for too long because muster for battle is still a really powerful play on turn three. You'd have to answer with a swipe. Yeah, one of the things as well is like, the only way Nick Slay's hand could work out okay is if the Paladin's hand was just as bad, and it's not. He, you know, he has Mustard, he has a Creeper, he can go turn four True Silver, which deals with a lot of the Druid minions, especially when he's sitting on double as your Drake. So, you know, Nyman does have a, a really good sort of a curve and just flow overall, which is something, even though this isn't by the looks of things like standard Secret Paladin, the early minions are still yeah. good, right? And we're finally seeing some of the some of the non 
auto include cards coming into Naiman's hand with those two haunted creepers. Which are also really interesting choices and yeah, I, I, it's really puzzling. I, I just want to see the entire deck list right now and uh, yeah. try to figure out how exactly it works. So my interpretation of the Paladin deck is that if you expect a lot of Reno Warlocks, if you expect a lot of Control Warriors, and you're trying to grind them at the, the, the series, Midrange Paladin does have this pocket where it could be pretty effective without having to play Murloc Paladin and be susceptible to like a Druid deck. So yeah. it feels like maybe that could be the approach, although I'm sure Nyman has his own whole complex explanation of it. Yeah, and I think also as well, if you look at the cards we've seen so far, even against yeah. decks that are very early board control heavy, like Secret Paladin, like Zoo, he's playing Zombie Chow, two Creepers, two Jugglers, Musters, mini bots. You know, there's so much early board if he can draw into it that he can just battle those, you know, like uh, early aggressive turns from other decks as well. Yeah, what's interesting is that we haven't seen that much late game yet. Yeah. This is the early game. And how, how it do, it really feels win? like just like a Swiss Army Knife deck, right? You can just do a, a bit of everything well. A little um, bit, yeah. Yeah, un until we see some of the uh, some of the other more sort of bigger impact cards, should I say. But yeah, like we speculated earlier that w maybe this could be a Reno Paladin. Now we can see those double copies in Nyman's hand. So it's still okay. He's so just playing it, two of Creeper it, in his Reno deck. No way it would be worth <laughs> it. But just, <laughs> there's just no way. I'd love uh, it if he drew Reno. Oh it'd be God. so awesome, though. <laughs> yeah. I was right. <laughs> Two creepers. <laughs> oh man. And uh, both the creepers are huh. getting played here. That's an interesting attack. It's a halfway point to play around certain things. But um, what, what do you make of that place of it? <laughs> I don't really know. Maybe he was he was thinking that there's uh, there's so many. There might be too many minions on the board that would uh, give some kind of issue if the if the creeper got oh, yeah. popped. Because yeah. there's two creepers as well, like yeah. that's a lot of tokens. Oh, so maybe he just right. wants to clear as much as possible. And also the double benefit of, well, now the shredder either goes into the 1-1 one -one anyway and then he can kill it next turn with, with the creeper juggles and the attack, or he runs into the mini bot and the shredder just instantly dies, which can actually mess up the opponent's turn if it dies on their turn, if it's something like a mana wraith, for example. So, you know, maybe he's just giving the priority to Nixley on purpose there. But it, it was an interesting play. It's just going like a little bit uh, right. into the shredder. Because I don't see. It. Sometimes you see that play when there's a noble sacrifice up. Because then in that case, the noble sacrifice is going to finish off yeah. the shredder. But that's not the case here. Yeah, I think he was making a good halfway play to, in case his opponent had swiped, they had to go into like the creepers instead, and also setting up for a knife juggler in the following turns. Which in this case, now he does have some knife juggler plays. Oh, yeah. And but he's he, going to be a lot of juggles if he chooses that route. He also has the Choose Over Champion play, too. Yep. Popping both of the Creepers here for the Juggles would play in the swipe a little bit, but if you're Naiman, you're probably thinking that, mm. uh, okay, if Nixley had a swipe, it would have come down last turn. Yeah, I think... Yeah, it's a real tough one, though, because with the True Silver, you also get the sort of tempo play of next turn having a True Silver. Mm -hmm. And if you do pop both Creepers, and then he does draw a swipe, you, you're just blown out completely there. Like, the whole board disappears uh, if he does run the two oh creepers no. in as well. He's going for it. Prepare the fireworks. The end is coming. Just juggle on minions oh. is just good. <laughs> yep, not bad at all. Nah, man, trying to see if he can get away with one juggle with the shield bit mini mop before mm. the pilot shredder dies. Because if you juggle twice with the on a creeper, you might end up uh, missing the damage there. Okay, I like right. it. Right. Yeah. His board is very weak to swipe right now, but and it, he's just poking the shredder yeah. for one every turn. He's <laughs> like, "You proc your shredder, not me." <laughs> well, that's, that's that's pretty funny. But yeah, like I mentioned, the doomsayer. He knows. He knows yeah. the way to ruin this game. Even Only the explosive sheep or the unstable ghoul. Yep. Explosive sheep. Wow. <laughs> oh, that would be pretty good. This is really tough now for Nick Slay as well because he can't even try and Drake into innovate swipe. Uh, at this point, because he's just quite, just a little bit short of that. So I think he might even just start off by just running the shredder in and hoping for some, hoping for that sheep. Yeah, I think that's the way to way to start. That trade seems to be happening no matter what. Yeah. So why not do it first? Mm, it's an iron peak owl. Yeah, one of the weakest you can get here. Yeah. Dust trade a little bit better than the one ones would, but in this situation, it, it it's uh, just as useless. 
Yeah, and with that true silver on Nyman's, uh, Nyman's end, just ready and waiting to go, he's got to feel pretty good to just do four damage straight up to the uh, to the Druid of the Claw and still have plenty of minions afterwards to, again, just keep the pressure on the on the Druid. And we've not seen, I don't think we've seen like a Wrath, any swipes yet. Um, did we see like one Living Roots? Yeah, we did see yeah. one on turn three, but so far, it's just the story of the game has been death by a thousand paper cuts. Mm. Nyman's just pecking away slowly. And Nick Slay is running out of health points to, to be able to fight back. Yeah, and actually now, uh, it, depending on how Nyman wants to sequence this, he can actually use his three tokens um, and then play the mini bot and be like, now if swipe comes, then he's feeling pretty okay because the right. board just doesn't really get that affected by a swipe at all. Yeah, I would expect him to play the mini bot here. Just looking at the, what he had, what the other cards in his hand are, the, the signal is pretty clear that he has to end the game as fast as he can. It, going into late game against the Druid with uh, six cards in the, in the hand, it's just, there's no way he could win. I mean, Boom's a great card, but he's going to need this Azure Drake to hit Swipe. Yeah. Yep. I think that's yeah, that's just the, only, the only chance. Especially after see, you've seen both Druid of the Claws gone as well. So, I mean, maybe a, a Belcher helps as well. Uh, he but, but he wouldn't be able to play it yeah. this turn. So I'm just thinking of the potential draws he could have got. Right. So this has to be a Swipe. Oh, oh. Gets a roar. Wow. That's not the way I expected this game to go. But it looks like Nick Slate is just dead. I can see. Yep. I think I'm with you, Savitz. I just want to see this actual whole deck list of this Paladin, just to <laughs> see like what what is the game plan? Do you just put minions on the board and win? Sure. Like it, it just feels really like you know really odd and something we're not really used to seeing right. uh, recently. The, the differentiating cards are like the if he's playing Sylvanas and Quartermaster and these kinds of yeah. mid-range cards that we're not expecting. But we'll put that on hold for now because it comes down to, once again, a mage versus druid. But what is that mage deck? And can Nick slay that mage? <laughs> nice. I see what you did there. Thank you, thank you. If you heard, if you heard the first series, I saved you guys from a lot of worse puns, trust me. <laughs> nice. Uh, so we are going to get the mage, mage and druid. And um, I would have predicted coming into the match that it, you know, it's a freeze mage for sure. But just looking at the other decks from Nyman, I'm like, it could, could just be anything, be anything yeah. 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 Could be anything. Well, Game 5 is going to also determine who is going to be going into the winner's match tomorrow. Uh, and Nyman is really looking forward to it. We got a chance to sit down, by the way, with Nyman about getting a second chance in Hearthstone and a shot at Redemption. I started to play Hearthstone after the World of Warcraft. We started to play World of Warcraft with my friends, with whom we were living in the United States. And after getting back to Kazakhstan, we realized that it's not possible to play it because of the latency. So I started playing Hearthstone, and uh, the problem which I faced is that I was uh, playing only one class. So I've been a Hunter player for like a year. I was disenchanting other cards. I was making really innovative and pretty interesting Hunter decks for the mid-range Hunter. I've met people who were on team Manacost, which is a Russian team. They're the ones who invited me to join the team. So when I joined the team, players who were on the team finally taught me not to disenchant other cards which don't belong to Hunter. And they also uh, started to teach me to play other classes. Uh, so after performing well during my first uh, offline event, which was in England, which is called Gfinity, I finished third fourth. I got attention from uh, really good teams like Team Dignitas. I was in Team Dignitas for like a week, then I heard the news about me being banned. Uh, I felt really depressed. I thought that I'm gonna retire from Hearthstone. I'm not gonna continue playing. Uh, I felt really bad. The reason for, uh, which kept me motivated and which finally led me to for creating a new account was my fiance. My fiance is the one who saw the potential, who saw the strengths in me, and as well as the knowledge of the game itself. Uh, the conversation with my fiance wasn't more like a dialogue, it was more like a monologue. She was the one who said that I should make a, create a new account, I should keep uh, practicing, keep playing in tournaments, and eventually I'm gonna get to BlizzCon. Uh, I made a really huge mistake in my life, and I got punished for that, but I got the second chance, and this is why I'm here.
Second chance indeed, but he has to close out in game five. And again, another touching moment, man. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's really awesome to see him uh, come back from uh, from some difficulties and some bad decisions that he ma he's made in the past. He's here now. He's he made it to the top eight, uh, and uh, it's only his first match here. But uh, he definitely want to be playing the, the second one in the in the upper bracket instead of the lower one. Yeah, and I think it's going to be really interesting, as we said just before that video, to see what major it is. It could very just straightforward be a freeze mage deck, but you know, to, to see players like Nyman bring like really sort of crazy decks, just not the standard stuff in the form of that paladin, and actually get some work done with it, it's very impressive. Yeah, with the warrior ban, that does seem to be the freeze mage. However, uh, I'm ready to be surprised. I was once before. I have actually been surprised multiple times throughout today. Let's see if game number five has any more surprises in store. Can Nick Slay continue his surprising run? Will Nightman be able to do it not just for himself, but also for his fiance? And here we go, and uh, looking at the starting hand, it is going to be that freeze mate. It's not impossible to take down a Druid, but it's going to be a challenge. Nick Slay. Oh, look at the inner weight, but outside of that, I don't think you hear really wants to keep any of those. Keeper is not bad, though. Keeper in the Grove is... Pretty important if you know it's Freeze Mage. The thing is, can Nick Slay put it on Nightman to play Freeze Mage? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. definitely a tough one. And uh, he uh, does keep hold of the Innovate and the uh, Keeper of the Grove. It's just, you know, even, even versus if it's like Tempo, it's something good to just deal with the early drops, right? So if a Sorcerer's Apprentice comes out, Mad Scientist comes out, it can still get some work done. Yeah, but definitely is a good card to have in a Druid deck. And, uh, and uh, Naiman here just going for a hero, but no mad scientist to turn to. Ouch. And no Frostbolt to face either. <laughs> <Just> to <be laughs> yeah, maybe it's not the time just yet. He likes his hunter, man. <laughs> just think that's a better hunter hero power. An opportunity to go for an early five mana play, puts out the Azure Drake. That starts putting pressure immediately. Going to do it, place that Drake instead of the Druid of the Claw. Trying to find a play for turn three, maybe a Shade of Naxxramas, or a Wild Crow to go directly to five mana from there. There you go. Nyman has the Accolade of Pain and an opportunity to freeze the Drake, too, if he needs to. Yep, but uh, he could go for a Rip Frost Bolt. I, I don't think the, the Ice Block is really necessary here. Yeah, I think one of the things he really needs to do, especially with this turn, is quite quickly identify how much damage he feels he can take this early. Once you see a Druid uh, bring out a minion, that, like, you know, 4-4 four, four on turn 2, it's uh, you really have to work out what you want to do in the long term, because you know you're going to be taking damage. Yeah, Acolyte seems like the, the most appealing play to me, because he knows that the Druid player is only going to be at 3 mana the next turn, so no Keeper of the Grove is available, so it's very likely that it's going to, going to kind of heal you for 4 while drawing that card. And that card show is also something that he really needs fast. He wants to pick up another Acolyte, maybe Arcane Intellect, at least the Mad Scientist to get those secrets on the board. Yeah, the only issue with the Acolyte is uh, I think a lot of the time, especially because he doesn't have any Arcane Intellect, so he said, or anything like that, is a lot of time you want to play it and like ping it or something to just guarantee at least two cards. But because of this Drake situation, I agree, like you take the heal potentially and, um, and then still cycle as well. So I, I like this play. Yep. All right, well, Nick doesn't pick up a three-mana minion, but he has an opportunity to answer the Acolyte, at least for, uh, you know, making sure it just draws only one card, and then he can push damage to phase. The Big Game Hunter is also an interesting one, because you know that Big Game Hunter is your great answer to Alex Straza, but maybe you want to develop more minions onto the board prior to your opponent can answering it. Yeah, the Big Game Hunter, while it does deal with Alex Straza easily, it only deals with Alex Strauss. That is the only target for it in the in the freeze mage deck. And quite often on the turns where Alex Strauss gets played, the game is already decided one way or another. So I think it, it might be a little bit stronger to just get the big game on the board here and and uh, use the Drake to clear off that. Uh, uh, exactly, because what, what you hope is you put you, because it, you know this isn't still the best turn regardless for the for the Druid, but with the BGH you put them in a, hopefully put them in a position where Alex Strauss doesn't matter because you put so much pressure on so early that uh, you know, it won't come into play too much, like you said. By the time it's uh, involved, it doesn't matter either way. Looks like he is going to go, to go for the Wrath, though, saving the big game hunter for that Alex Rasa. It can be powerful uh, later on. It is a big big moment there. This is not a misplay by any means, no. not at all. Like Just a different line of play. Yeah, he's taking a, a little bit of a slower route, and Nyman is going to respond by drawing the cards, and you got Arcane Intellect, which is pretty important. It gives him an opportunity to answer it. Nick Slay, again, doesn't pick up Charlotte Shredder. He only has Big Game Hunter. And I think you just want to hold on to Keeper of the Grove here. It feels like a complete waste to use yeah. it in this situation. 
No, not necessarily complete waste, because if you do use it to, to kill off that the novice engineer, it does protect the Drake where uh, where, the, where it would require two additional mana from Naiman to deal to deal with it. But yeah, it, it does seem a little bit weak. I think one of the things as well is like if he played the Keeper of the Grove, that there's a small chance that that could activate a Frost Nova Doomsayer, because then you've seen the Keeper of the Grove and it locks out the Druid's turn five. So then, you know, it proves some, a lot of trouble, whereas you're not going to Frost Nova Doomsayer at one minion on the board, right? Uh, it's kind of one of those times where like the Keeper play, yeah, it was bad, but all the options were bad. That swipe yeah. did not accomplish that much. Well, you know about it, did, it did five to yeah. face. It man. did get an additional po damage point there because of the Azure Drake spell power. Oh, and he does have the Doomsayer. And the Nova, not just one, but two Novas coming up. Oh, and there's the Wild Growth. A little bit too late. A little <laughs> bit too late. <laughs> Probably would have wanted that four turns ago. Two options here, either the left through of the Claw or the right one. <laughs> place, the, place the right one. In Taunt form, that's interesting. Why yeah. Why? Why do you think he, he chose to play it in the, in the Taunt instead of Charge, Raven? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, really, because the, the, the taunt one, normally it's later turns when you don't want it to get Flame Strike down. But then if you went into, say, like, Blizzard and then into Flame Strike, then it just does the same job. So I don't know, maybe I would have pushed damage, especially because he's already putting him... He's on 21 now, with yeah. the charge, it would have been a lot less. So, yeah, it's a really interesting one. I'm not quite sure whether that was worth it or not, but we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, it is more resilient to cards such as Flame Strike. It, it, it does survive it now, but I would also, like slightly lean towards the charge form although it's not as tempting as it would be if let's say he already had a combo in his hand yeah that's true yeah maybe it's just like well i don't have any other other than doing four damage to phase for a turn there's no right big follow-up right so i'll just play it in the, the more sort of safer standard way yeah he doesn't know that he doesn't, he doesn't know that naiman has things like forgotten torch in his deck yet keep in mind this is the first time we've seen the mage deck from yep. naiman all day which is starting to look very reminiscent of uh dr hippies yep as well so I'm curious if it ends up being very similar card for card because right now I see no differences. I think the uh, actually I think like the novice engineer might be a nod to the more burn heavy deck as opposed to Antonidas. So there's a chance that you can make that read, but obviously it's not like 100. percent It's not like seeing a torch straight away, and that's just confirmed. Yeah, novice engineer is uh, is an interesting card to be playing. That's that's for sure. It does trade a little bit worse than the loot order does on early turns, but. Coming into the uh, going into a late game, just ha having the access to the immediate card yeah. draw can really help you get your pieces together for the burn combo or or the board exactly. Game. Especially because the deck relies on burn, right? Like you just want to just spam all your spells and kill them that way. So you want that spell instantly because you're playing with ten mana and novice engineers only two. Right. Okay, so nine man, I, I anticipate an ice block being developed because I for some reason thought he was going to go for Alex Straza. But I think this is because, again, he's taking a halfway play, making sure not to just go super all in. He's also picking the armor off instead of killing off the Drew the Claw because he knows that he has the opportunity to do it again next turn. So this is a very complex play, and I really like how Nightman did this. Yeah, really, really nice play there. It's also, after seeing the Keeper of the Grove, it seems like it, it would be fairly likely that the, the Doomsayer would go off right. here. Ixley, however, does have that second keeper of the crow waiting, and seeing anything else but the second keeper here would be a surprise. Yeah, I think one of the things as well, like for, for, for Nyman at the moment, even if the second keeper comes down, because he can follow it up with, and something we've sort of half discussed uh, already is, well, that's four mana this turn, so then his three mana follow up's not going to be great, and then he just freezes it and presents the same issue again. So this Dr. Boom that's so good versus Freeze Mage, mainly because of those boom bots and the seven health being difficult to deal with, he's just not getting played every single turn. I'm slightly confused by the wild growth decision here because he uh, he chose to not do it on the previous turn, and now he suddenly like changes the game plan. I, I don't understand this fully. It, why, why did he go? Like I, I'm not saying the wild growth is a bad play, but why did, if he if he was to go for the wild growth, why did he not do it one turn earlier? Yeah, because it's a strange one because if he did it a turn earlier, he could could he have still hero power? Does he thinking like uh -huh. this gains me hero power with a uh, boom next turn? But I think he could have. So I think either way, he would have gained one armor. E each turn. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it just seems inconsistent to me. Mm. Could it maybe be a little bit of nerves com pl coming into play here for for Nixley? Although he was the kind of the, one of the more, more uh, laid back players. Yeah. Although if you look at the expressions well, on his face, he does look I, a I little stressed. I think like he takes a, a more laid back approach to the game as a whole. Oh. But while he's in a game, as we can see, you know he's yeah. very intense about it, and it does affect him quite you know quite dramatically. Whereas no matter what happens, Nyman just seems to be like, yep. <laughs> yep, next turn. Yep, okay. Yeah, I like that theory. 
Yeah. This is a lot to commit to just kill a Doomsayer. You're it's really is. a charge and a Savage Roar. So, and, and it's a lot of your hand, too. So Nightman, you know, he's disappointed that the Doomsayer didn't set up a clean Alex Straza. But at the same time, I, I don't know if that's going to stop him. Because he sees that there's eight damage on board and one Savage Roar is used. Yeah. I don't know. Is it the time to just go for it? Just go for the I Alex Straza? He I mean, doesn't have a nice block up, so if there was a combo waiting, I think that would just be a game, but he's just saw one roar, so he's gonna take it. He has Ice Barrier, right? He has Ice Barrier. But he, he would still die to the combo because oh, okay. the minions on the board. Oh, I yeah, yeah. That's a... It would it would be uh, right. more than. The Force Nature Savage would have been a 28, so he would have been exactly. Oh, it would have been exactly 28, yeah. yeah. That's right. In this case, Nick Slay has a pretty good answer to the Alex Straza, but uh, here's the interesting thing, is Nick Slay will load up the board, and then uh, Nightman can just Frost Nova, and then just keep burning his opponent down, and he's got 16 damage just in the burn alone. And, and he can play Ice Block as well, oh, yeah. and, uh, without the Pyro, so... And the board just got filled, exactly. so yeah. there is a Keeper of the Crow, Nick Slay wouldn't be able to play it because of the full board. Well, yeah, that I would mean, be surprising yeah, if he had two keepers. keepers. Oh, sorry, not keeper. I meant the angel floor. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and a low yeah, tap yeah, as well. Like a low tap is going to be pretty yeah. important. So and, and low tap, yeah. yeah. So two two ancient floors and low tap. But <laughs> is that just a casual <laughs> stretch from Nyman there? Like, <laughs> yeah, got this. He got knows this. that he's yeah. in a really good position. Well, now he can frost oh Nova. God. Yep. Uh, he can forgotten torch ping. And now set up the Pyroblast, and there's nothing Nixlay can do. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, with the oh full button, God. Nixlay is like, oh no. Have we seen it again? The second time in a row a Freeze Mage will defeat a Druid? There is still that small chance that the Nixlay would pick up a Rot to Rot off his own minion and did, then get that lore, but nope. That is a swipe, and I think that's just it. Yeah. yeah. It looks like Nick Slade does not have an answer to it, and all of a sudden, despite the fact that once again this Freeze Mage was put into a corner with one of its worst matchups in Hearthstone. It's gonna prevail. Yeah, and I think we also see why everyone's taking this style of Freeze Mage more recently, because it's so much faster. You don't like, normally have to rely on like Antonidas, okay, then like one or two turns to get some fireballs and then chain all of that. Right. It's like, no, I'm just gonna cast spells straight from a hand at your face, get those torches back again and just keep going in. That's gonna be game. Yeah, that's Nightman. the game, and that's the series. Nine Man takes it and moves on to day two into the winners match. Yeah, Fighter Blast is way, uh, way to first victory here at the, at the European Winter Championship. That yeah. was a great first two series to start it off, going to game five each time and watching the Freeze Mage defeat the Druid and overcome these odds. Uh, what a awesome lineup and a great series to start off the tournament here. Absolutely. I'm gonna be interested to see how that Paladin deck performs going further, because uh, I, gotta, I gotta admit I wasn't quite sold just yet based on what we saw. It might work really well, and Nyman has done his practice for sure. He has figured out that, okay, this deck is better than that uh, Secret Yeah, power. exactly, yeah. Nyman will go on to play Dr. Hippie tomorrow for a chance to advance to the top four playoff bracket. Nick Slay is not out of it. He'll be playing Cereza tomorrow as well. Let's just hop on over to Nimsh who is standing fireside with Nyman for a few words on his win. Thank you so much, Fred. And I'm here with Nyman. Congratulations on the win. Uh, can you tell me what are your expectations coming into this match? And do you think you won the mind games in the very beginning uh, with the first blind pick? Yeah, I'm not sure about the mind games because I, was, uh, I knew that he's going to be using Zulok and Secret Paladin. So I didn't really have a bad deck, bad deck to start with. And I started with the Hunter, but the Mulligan was pretty bad. All right, and um, how does it feel, you know, to be back, and also not only be back, but also be back with the Hunter deck? Feels good. Really, really good. All right, all right, man. I'm super happy that you're back overall. And uh, how do you feel about your next opponent, Dr. Hippy? Do you think you're gonna take it? Uh, we'll see. Okay, do, do you have any words for Dr. Hippy? Well, prepare for the battle. All right, Dr. Hippie, you better be prepared, but now we are going to TJ to see the highlights of the match. TJ, take away. I share the same sentiments as Nyman there. It was good. It was good. Good to see the Hunter again. Uh, my name is TJ. I'm joined here at the sidebar by Brian Kibler. Kibler, we're going to start off. We're going to go directly into one of the comments that Nyman made, and the Hunter specifically. A Hunter's a deck that seems like it has a lot of good matchups in the current tournament meta. 
but we didn't see any in America's championship. And we're only seeing a couple here in the Europe winter championship. Why do you think that is? What's the hunter spot in the meta right now? I think uh, you see Hunter and the sort of aggro Shaman decks taking up a pretty similar spot of uh, the deck that really doesn't give the opponent a lot of time to react. Yeah. You're able to uh, punish decks like Seeker Paladin, uh, decks like Zoo with Hunter. That's a case where the Hunter is specifically a lot better mm. than the Shaman deck because of that particular matchup. Yeah, and zero Shamans in yeah. the Year of Winter Championship, so that, that might be filling the void of the Shaman with the Hunter. Uh, another interesting deck that we saw throughout that matchup was Nyman choosing to bring mid-range Paladin over Seeker Paladin. Uh, Midrange Paladin seems like it has a lot of similar matchups as Seeker Paladin. Uh, what are some of the matchups that it differs from and, and why do you think Nyman brought Midrange instead of the Secret? Well, I was actually pretty surprised to see that he was playing Freeze Mage in that lineup because yeah. one of the places where I would imagine you might want to play uh, the Midrange pa uh, Paladin deck is against decks like Control Warrior. You, the mid-range Paladin deck has a lot of tools to win these very long games that you might play, but he's clearly planning on banning Warriors because of the Freeze yeah. Mage as well. So uh, I, I imagine that his particular build, we saw a lot of early game Double Creeper, Minibot, uh, the Zombie Chaz as well. It's probably looking to target a lot of the aggressive decks like Secret Paladin, like Zoo. Yeah, also, it seems like he's really comfortable with the deck. Uh, that can be one thing that, you know, you don't factor in too much. It's a player-by-player -player basis. We saw some of the win rates float up from Nyman. Paladin is one of his strongest classes, and especially against some of the deck archetypes that are popular. So um, maybe we can get some words with him later about uh, why he made that choice. But let's take a look at one of the clips from that mid-range Paladin deck. We're going to head into game number four here. And uh, to set the context just a little bit, uh, Naaman had a really good start with the mid-range Paladin, and he had a couple turns where a swipe would have cleared his board, but he made the read that it wasn't in the hand. And so we're going to talk a little bit about reads and, and making risks. So, Kibler, uh, why don't you go ahead and, and break down this play here and some of the interesting things that happened. Well, there are a couple of interesting things that, that happened here. One was, as you mentioned, Nyman just playing directly into uh, Nick Slay's swipe. Uh, he had a board that swipe would be devastating against for several turns and sort of must have realized that Nick Slay does not have access to the card. So he chooses to uh, just break his creepers to get a bunch of juggles off of the knife juggler. Uh, he had a lot of other options here as well. The, the true silver champion obviously looks quite attractive, uh, but this gives him a board that's very strong uh, immediately and put up, puts a lot of pressure in as well. Another thing that I thought was really interesting here uh, was the fact that after all of this, he chooses not to break his opponent's piloted shredder. And there's a couple of reasons you might do that. One is that you avoid the disaster of something like a doomsayer coming off when you no longer have the ability to deal with it. You also are just not giving your opponent the initiative to attack with the minion off of the shredder. So if you kill that piloted shredder and then your opponent gets to attack first, uh, they're able to clear whatever they want anyway, so you might as well leave the shredder on board. Yeah, since they're going to make that trade anyway, there's no reason to, especially since you have the lead in that series. There was a couple times where he had the lights just as equipped earlier and he started chipping away at the shredder <laughs> just to sort of try and taunt him into, into attacking with it. But uh, that was pretty funny. Um, now, I want to get your thoughts real quick before we finish up here. Nyman's lineup is really interesting. It's one of the most unique uh, lineups in the tournament. How do you think Nyman will fare going further in this tournament when he starts to see lineups where it's going to be a tougher ban? Now that you said he sort of contradicts himself with the Freeze Mage and the Paladin, which have completely different strengths. Yeah, I'm really curious to see more of the Paladin deck. We haven't seen mid-range Paladin in, in quite a while. Uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, Secret Paladin has kind of supplanted its place in the metagame. Uh, so I'm curious to see where he feels that lines up better uh, and exactly uh, how people approach this from a ban position. We saw last weekend uh, Amnesiac played that uh, anything could happen Paladin deck. Yeah. Uh, and that was, ended up getting banned out uh, in all of his matchups after the first one. So uh, I, I wonder if uh, Diamond's future opponents will you know, maybe be unsure exactly how they match up against the mid-range Paladin deck. Yeah, definitely some things to look forward to as uh, Nyman continues to play uh, later on in the weekend. Thank you again, Brian Kibler, for joining us. We are going to go into the Group B matches, but before we do that, take a look at the highlights from the last match and also some of the many reactions from Nick Slay.